Now, this is my goat. I've used him before in an example, but I mean, he's so great that I have to keep using him uh, in the sports industry. You already know what it is. We're talking about Michael Jordan. Now, he was known for his secrecy, his secrecy um, because he kept his thoughts and his thought process and his strategies going into every single game to himself. Right. This helped him maintain an element of surprise and dominance over his opponents. Now, I've seen many clips, many documentaries and other people have spoken about this man. Um, you know, they call him, I think, Black Jesus. Now, I want to put it out there that has been documented that Jordan would go as far as creating a fictional conflict between him and an opponent he was about to face in his mind. That way, it would give him the edge he needed to dominate that opponent on game night. So think about that. That means his opponent could have been the, the nicest person on planet Earth. But you can't necessarily go to war against a nice person. That makes you look like the evil doer. So he has to fabricate some of these situations. Sometimes it's just as simple as the way he looked at me when we were walking down, you know, the, the hallway of the to, to the locker rooms or, or whatever. Or maybe he made a comment about somebody else. And I'm taking it and saying, well, no, you're making a comment about, you know, all players. And maybe I'm, I'm interpreting it as you're talking about me, right? In, in, in coded language. So I'm going to take that and process it and say, you know what? Next time I see you, it's on. And it could be as simple as that. It could be as simple as, you know what? I didn't like the way you crossed me over the last game. So now there's a vendetta. I'm going to hold on to it. Every time I see you, we're going to play at this level that I want to play at, right? And so that's what he did to make sure he maintained his dominance over his opponents. And some, some of these so-called nice players have even said, I don't understand why he was so angry with me. I didn't do anything with, to him or I've never met him before. So where is it coming from? And that's when you hear Michael himself kind of allude to the fact that there's no friends between these lines once he steps on the court. And that's how it should be, right? So you maintain your leverage when no one knows your next move but you. Those are some examples that I think how concealing your intentions can be beneficial for both the personal and professional um, settings, right? But understand that it's also important to remember that this law doesn't mean that you shouldn't completely close off and not share your plans with anybody. That's not what it's saying. It's about understanding the importance of discretion and knowing when to reveal your plans. That's the key right there. Knowing when to reveal your plans and when to keep them hidden. It's also about understanding that by keeping your plans and your intentions concealed, you maintain the element of surprise and potentially gain the advantage over others. I hope you found this episode eventful and beneficial. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't be afraid to just hit the subscribe button and the like. Give it a thumbs up if you appreciate the content that I'm giving you every single week. And that's all for today's episode. And I hope that you gain some valuable insights about law number three, conceal your intentions and how it can be applied to both your personal and professional circumstances. Remember, speak less, listen more and think immensely. Thanks for listening. Until next episode, love, peace, and happiness.